how are you? Today is May 13th and Jupiter is here in Pisces and actually tonight, tomorrow-ish, we'll start feeling Mercury begin its pre-shadow phase of its retrograde. So I wanted to do a little collective for Mercury retrograde pre-shadow. And like I mentioned in my last video, the pre-shadow phase is like the worst part of the retrograde. And most people don't get that. But then like when you look back, <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, it started weeks before. So even though Mercury will not be exactly retrograde until the 29th of this month, right now we're starting to move into that pre-shadow phase. So... Even though Jupiter is here in Pisces now, and you will start to see blessings, I want to talk about them both today and then do an all signs reading at the end for what we can expect for Mercury retrograde for each individual sign. Okay, keep in mind that when I do the tarot, these things are uh, relative to each person, so they may not resonate with everyone and they're just general readings. At this time with Jupiter and Pisces, you will be more open to spiritual growth, abundance, and, and blessings when it comes to lessons being learned and how that attributes to your life's path and soul mission. So right now, you're going to be more open to spiritual things than ever. That being said, if you would like to book a reading or you would like to get a birth chart interpretation or both, please contact me. My email is in the description box always, and I'm pretty good about responding quickly to those. Uh, also, that being said with all that stuff about what you're learning now about you, with the Mercury retrograde, people like to go back. You know, they like to revisit things, and Mercury does that for a reason. It's a chance to collect what it is that you've learned and also to see what emotions are there that are left over that need to be looked at and most likely healed. If something is coming back for you and you feel that it is meant for you, I mean really feel like discerning, not your ego saying, well I remember how that used to feel good so I want that again. That's not what I mean. I mean you feel like you've grown, they've grown, and you're on the right path now and it would be divinely inspired to come back together with a person or career or hobby or whatever, that's up to you and your discernment. So I'm not going to say everything that you go back to Mercury Retrograde is crap, because that's not true. For some people, it is divinely inspired to do that if they're in the right place and if they're in alignment. So alignment is so important right now. So be careful when you're revisiting the past and also be aware pre-shadow phase starting tomorrow and Saturday but mainly tomorrow is Friday so late tonight you'll start feeling this energy more so and then tomorrow Friday starting the weekend communication failure technology failure anything like having to do with travel your car you know, flat tire, your battery goes out, just random things that you were not expecting. As well as communication breakdowns, like you took things the wrong way, there's just a disconnect when it comes to communication. And or you sent the text, they never got it. And now you're pissed because they didn't respond, they didn't even know you texted. You know what I'm saying? Same thing when it comes to technology, like let's say you wrote in a very important paper or you have a deadline to reach and you have certain documents you need to get to and you get in your computer and they're gone. They somehow, they disappeared. It's things like that. Little challenges that pop up, shit you obviously don't need to happen, but it's like Mercury's forcing you to slow down. So with all this Gemini energy here, Mercury in Gemini, Venus in Gemini, we want to go quickly, you know, and our minds are moving quickly and we're getting sparking new ideas and uh, communication is opening up with different friends and networking with people 
people who are into things that you're just starting to get into. You know, you might find a mentor at this time with Jupiter coming into Pisces. Or you may start mentoring others when it comes to their spiritual growth with topics that you really know about. Okay, so in order to find where this is going to affect you most, you need to look at your birth chart and see where Pisces is for you. Which house is it in? So in the first house, it would be all about you. And so that would be for Pisces rising. Um, so it would be about the self, um, really expanding on how you look, how you feel, your own personal growth, how you represent yourself to the world, etc. Second house is money, uh, your own personal value. So you can see an expansion in that house with Jupiter coming in there. And so, um, so on and so forth. So the third house would be communication, siblings, um, fourth house is home, family, property, and your roots, ancestry, things like that. Fifth house is pleasure, children, um, sex, romance, in a casual form. Sixth house is what you do on a daily basis, daily tasks, it's your pets, it's the people you take care of. Uh, it's also diet and health. So like if you have a, you might start a new workout plan. If Jupiter is entering, entering Pisces in your sixth house, seventh house is long-term relationships, marriage, long-term partnerships. Um, and then eighth house is very intimate, very deep, occult, healing, emotion, sex, when it comes to intimacy and, and making yourself vulnerable. It's, a, it's other people's influence on you and it's other people's finances. So this is the house, if you have Jupiter moving into Pisces in your eighth, you may see endings in relationships, new beginnings in relationships, um, deep healing, deep wounds coming up to be healed. This is also, you may see an inheritance come in from a death in the family, something like that. Um, other people's money somehow affecting you. You could have debt that's coming to surface now that maybe you forgot about or, or that maybe is starting to actually affect your life in negative ways. So it all is here to help you balance out and to learn something. But we just don't know until you find that house. So then ninth house is higher education, travel, um, expanding the mind, expanding your horizons, looking at ideals and views, religious views, things like that. Tenth house is going to be career and how you show up in the world. So like on social media, things like that. How other people see you and how you affect, how your light and your own uh, life purpose affects others. Then the 11th house is people, it's friends, it's other people's kids, it's uh, technology as far as doing things online, internet, connecting through the internet. And then 12th house is the subconscious, it's an accumulation of your dreams, the things that you keep hidden from the world. And that's a rough house to have Pisces, it's very dreamy. Um, but if these are things that need to be dealt with, Jupiter will be there for us, depending on what house it's in for you. You can find that online for free, or you can email me and I can help you figure out where you'll most likely be affected. You're probably already starting to see this, or starting to see things break down from this, uh, and from the Pluto retrograde, and from the Scorpio full moon that we had. Things were already starting to break down. So now, it's just going to be a challenging phase. But it can be optimistic, depending on how you look at it. It's going to be a good thing, ultimately, and it's only here, Jupiter and Pisces, until the end of July. Then it's going to go retrograde back into Aquarius. So if you notice now, gas shortages, that's Jupiter and Pisces. Uh, cryptocurrency starting to fall off a little bit, that's Jupiter and Pisces. So you can expect for those things to get better or go back up when Jupiter goes back into Aquarius at the end of July. Okay, and then it will stay there for like about five months or so and then go back into Pisces for good for the rest of 2022 at the end of December. Okay, so right now, like I mentioned in the last video, this is just a preview for what Jupiter is gonna be doing for us. This is the best time to dedicate to spiritual practice. 
to healing, to having more compassion for others, and, and we will be fully understanding more so what we want to see in the world. And instead of the Aquarian energy that we've been in with Jupiter, of um, more so the big picture for humanity, it's not as cold and detached as Aquarius. So this is going to be more so the loving side, the more understanding and compassionate side of what's fair and what we deserve as a whole and how we can come together in a more warm and loving way. I mentioned in the last video, Jupiter can bring overindulgences. So at this time, we'll probably see a rise in overdose, uh, drug-related crime, and um, like DUI. So be very careful. Do not overdo it. This is the time when people can gain weight. Um, like if you have Pisces in your first house, you might see a little bit of weight gain at this time because Jupiter is so big and expansive. So you really want to check your birth chart. I can't stress that enough of where you will be affected the most. Um, so be careful not to get sucked into this super dreamy Piscean energy because Neptune is here as well and Neptune brings kind of a fog. It can bring more of an illusion. And so this is going to be like triple Piscean energy for the next two months. And this means the stories that you see in the media played out will be exaggerated, will probably not be true, <laughs> will probably be something that somebody's trying to force and they're going to use propaganda and they're going to use whatever stories they can at this time and people will be more apt to believing those. So you want to really stay grounded during this time. Be open in the ways that you should. You know what I mean? Like, we got to stay practical, but be open to seeing the signs from spirit, seeing more synchronicities, noticing the people in your life that believe the things that you do, who help expand you in those spiritual ways and in the ways of following your dreams and getting more connected in a loving and compassionate way. You may find that relationships become more casual at this time. Uh, it's not as committed. It's more of a free-flowing energy. So you want to be careful with those about that overindulgence, things like that. This is a time where many people can become pregnant with Jupiter and Pisces. So we got to keep a level-headedness about us here. But it is very exciting. It is very positive. And anything negative that comes through in the beginning you should be able to have an awareness and see where that's going and how it could end up more positive for you at the end. So Jupiter does bring blessings, um, but we're just getting a glimpse of this here. So we'll see more of these Jupiter big blessings in Pisces next year in 2022. So with that being said, Mercury retrograde pre-shadow, expect this to pop off here tomorrow or the next day. <laughs> you're really, you're going to feel it for the next two weeks. And then it's going to go heavy on the 29th. We're going to be there in Mercury retrograde. But by then, I promise, the first, I don't know why more people don't talk about this, but the pre-shadow period is worse. And then by Mercury retrograde, you're really starting to feel it and like understand. <laughs> uh, maybe some of you won't understand, especially with Jupiter and Pisces, but you should start to be able to see... The, all the shit that came up during pre-shadow during this time we're about to start right now until the 29th and then Saturn stops I think it's like the 22nd or 23rd before the Mercury retrograde and then we have this huge lunar eclipse total lunar eclipse Saturn is going to stop and that energy is going to be difficult so right now we really need to get situated With Jupiter here we can think of new dreamy ways to connect to spirit and get corrected, course correction, right, for our life path. And then we're going to be dealing with this Mercury retrograde ups and downs challenges. And we kind of need to figure, figure out where we're going to be headed and make moves in this next week or two. Because when Saturn stops and gets ready to go retrograde, that energy is more difficult and that brings restriction. So keep in mind too, with Mercury retrograde, people try to relive the past, the past uh, replays itself, and people will say things like, oh yeah, don't worry about it. 
you know, people in authority are like, oh, things are getting better and uh, we won't be as restricted and we'll be able to travel and we'll be able to do all this stuff. And then Mercury retrograde comes in and it's like, no, we're going back to the past. No, nope, sorry, something happened. Travel restrictions are happening again and you have to wear, you know, things still. And so just be careful, especially people coming back from your past, trying to talk to you as if they've changed, when in reality, they probably haven't. They're just reflecting back to that time that they were with you or, you know, they were around you and they missed that. And, you know, people will say anything. So you got to use your own discernment, your own connection to the divine to be aware of these people coming back and for yourself to be thinking about what it is you're trying to go back to. Okay? So... I already pulled these cards for the pre-shadow for the collective because I didn't want this video to take a super long time. So first out was Ten of Cups. This is for the collective, okay, for the pre-shadow and Mercury retrograde. So what what is Mercury trying to do for us here? Can you see? There we go. Ten of Cups. So this is like trying to find this ultimate happiness. And I think Mercury, sometimes we get that feeling, right? Of like, oh, well, we can just go back and redo it. I can just go back and talk to this person. And I remember how happy we were. Things like that. Uh, but I feel this is like, we want this ultimate happiness. We want this emotional fulfillment. And we can get it. And with Jupiter here, we can find the things that are going to bring us the most fulfillment through spirit and through the connection. Next we have Ace of Wands, where it is like a spark, it's like a new beginning, a new inspiration. And Jupiter may be bringing that in for us. But with the Mercury retrograde, it's also too like people trying to revisit the past, people just trying to come back to you from your past, Five of Swords, people uh, trying to one-up you or, you know, challenges, conflict, mental conflict about where it is that you're headed. And the Mercury retrograde does that. You know, it's like, well, maybe we can just go back to the past. Or maybe if we try it a different way. Uh, or maybe I should try that thing that I used to love. And it, it doesn't always work out that way. So this is about knowing when to walk away from something. Uh, Five of Swords is a winning at all costs type energy. And because of that, you can be taken advantage of. So like I mentioned with the propaganda and the Neptune stuff, we want to be careful with Jupiter here that we don't revert to old habits, old ways of thinking, uh, heavy drug and alcohol intake because this last like six months you might have thought, oh I'm fine, like I don't have a problem with that anymore or I can control myself, um, like I've grown out of that. And then Jupiter hits Pisces and you're like, you don't have control of it. So just be very careful about that. Um, so it's like we want to find this new, very creative inspiration for a new path that's going to bring us this ultimate fulfillment. But we have to know what we have to let go of. We have to know what we're walking away from and why. And Mercury does this retrograde three times a year to help you understand those things why you walked away in the first place, why it wasn't going to work. And with the communication breakdowns and stuff, it makes it more apparent where the challenges are in those relationships, where the challenges are for you and career. So after the Five of Swords popped out the Four of Cups, which is complacency. It's like feeling discontent um, where you don't, you don't see the options that you want. The way um, that they've come out, the cards, I feel like it's like knowing what to walk away from when you don't feel good emotionally, when it's just not lining up for you, when that person or that career hasn't helped bring a fulfillment to you in the way that you expected. And I'm not one to say like someone comes in your life and they have to make you happy or they they're supposed to bring you emotional fulfillment that's not true that's not real life you have to find your own emotional fulfillment but this is just about seeing it being aware of it acknowledging that it's not going to end up the way that you thought and that you don't want this option you don't like it 
it doesn't feel good, feels icky, and uh, it's just like, I kind of just rather not, you know, uh, because there has been past pain here, ten of swords, this is over now, but this is about betrayal or like the hurt over and over and over again, and when something hurts you repeatedly, repeatedly, that that love or that passion that you have for that career or when things don't work in your favor repeatedly that love and that passion that you have for that thing starts to slip away so this is about an ending this could be a death this is what it is that we're walking away from okay and this is going to start to to open the door to brand new things. Anytime there's a death, there's going to be something brand new that shows up for you. Something where spirit is teaching you, okay, you did that for a while and it didn't work out, but what did you learn? And now let's take what you learned and go ahead into this new thing where you have a more understanding, where you have a better view and um, aspiration for what, what it is you want to turn that into and how you could use it moving forward. So we are walking away from something as a collective. Um, I talked about this in the last video and probably the last one before that. Everyone was doing this and it's different for everyone but we were all leaving something behind and so it's time to let that go now. And in a lot of in a lot of ways it was breakups. We had the lovers reverse pop out after this ten of swords. So we're leaving behind a painful relationship. Something that continually caused pain that maybe we tried, we tried, we tried, we wanted to make it work, we tried all these different ways, and it just didn't come together. So when something is that painful, you know, it just gets to where you just don't want to. And that's that energy of the four of cups. So the lovers reverse is a breakup, it's a misalignment. And that's probably the best word, thank you spirit, that could be said. Because Jupiter in Pisces wants to show you where you do have alignment. What blessings are coming in for you and new opportunities where you will find more of a connection. Okay, so the lovers is also a choice. So in reverse, this could be like confusion over a choice, not wanting to make, avoiding, you know, avoiding a choice, avoiding letting this go. And a lot of, a lot of us were, even though we saw the red flags. So the next card that came out was Seven of Swords. So there's just something that we didn't trust about this thing. And so it's best to just walk away from it. Um, this card can be the card of like running away. Or it's also the card of um, deception, lies. And this could be that you or the person or the situation there was some sort of deceiving around it, like maybe the person wore a mask, per se, you know, like maybe they thought they could be something and they couldn't, or they put on a front like they wanted something when they really didn't, or um, you thought they were perfectly capable of a commitment or a long-term thing and they really weren't, things like that. But this is also about how we lie to ourselves, and we're moving away from this. Like maybe you knew the whole time it wasn't going to work and you still kept trying to make it work. Take this however it resonates, okay? For a lot of us, it was relationships. For a lot of us, it's uh, how, you, how you were trying to make things work for money or career um, or friendships even. So we're walking away from this energy, obviously, um, because it just became apparent that you couldn't trust the situation, it didn't feel good, it didn't feel comfortable. So now Seven of, of Swords is also, it's time to get strategic. It's time for you to start thinking about the best way for you to move forward. After those masks are removed, after you get rid of the deception, the self-deception, and you're able to see things more clearly. So we need to have a plan in place, get very strategic about where we're going because right after that we got the chariot. So we're starting to move forward now very quickly. Chariot is cancer energy. It's about comfort, it's about family, it's about nurturing, and it's about what's best for everyone. At the same time, the chariot is about taking a hold of your life. It's about taking the reins back, taking control back over what it is that you actually wanted. You know, in relationships and in career, a lot of times 
we give in pieces of ourselves. I have to go to the last one. Just put it right here, and when I'm done, okay. All right. So put it right. Can you put this in the trash? Mm -hmm. Just take, leave it on, on there for me. Here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of times in relationships or career, we start to give away pieces of ourselves or we start to compromise in ways that we normally wouldn't. Um, especially if it's like a soulmate energy or a twin flame energy, it's something you're really expected to work out. You're more likely to compromise in those situations. And now we're starting to see where we did that. And now we're starting to see like, I wouldn't have done that if I was in my right mind. Or or why was I giving so much to something that I, was not reciprocal? Or like, I really pushed for this thing and you weren't, you know? So now we're starting to say like, I need to stand in my own power. I need to go after the things that are gonna make me happy regardless of who's around, regardless if the money's there, if the career's there, if the house and home and everything's in order. It just, I need to make it kind of fall into place for myself. I need to be strategic about this and be ready like come what may energy, which I love Moulin Rouge, so you can sing that song in your car later if you want to find it on YouTube or Spotify, whatever. And just scream it out and cry it out, okay? Because right now, Jupiter and Pisces wants us to surrender. So we have all this pre-shadow Mercury challenges and think about the past and don't you want to go back to the past? No, we don't. Unless it's divinely guided for you. But it's like an energy of Mommy? surrender. You really need to surrender. I can't. It's not on your camp. But guess what? I saw Max and Ruby. I love Max and Ruby. I put it on. Okay. I'll be done in just a minute, okay? Okay. Wait. You can film a video now. Thanks. You can film a video now. Okay. So, this is about... What was I saying now? We're letting go and allowing Jupiter to come in and bring in his level of expertise, especially in Pisces, of where we can connect more, where we can get joy, and being open, like really being open to those things. And I say it all the time, but it's like, even if it doesn't look how you thought, even if it's something way out there that you never even thought you would care about, these are the things we need to be open to, okay? But also, with the Mercury retrograde, don't try to make things fit that aren't fitting. Don't try to go back to the past if you're not aligned, if you're in this misaligned, lover's reverse energy, and it hurts, and you feel within you that it's over, okay? because there's gonna be some of us that try to do that. And we're not having that right now, okay? We're just not having it. So the chariot energy, we're, we're moving forward and it's like uh, opportunities are coming in. We're very optimistic. Jupiter is here, so let's just surrender and just go with it and just see what happens. Pisces energy is very go with the flow. It's fluid and it's like everything happens for a reason. I will take the lessons as they come and you're not out there looking and trying to make piece, like pieces feet and pieces feet fit. You're not trying to make pieces fit uh, where they're not meant to, you know. And so, last two cards we got strength, which is Leo, which is the sun, which is your joy, and it's it's gonna be a new a new thing that lights you up gets you excited, but it gets you trusting the universe again. It gets you in a, in a place, Jupiter and Pisces, and Mercury retrograde, where we recognize what didn't work and why, and then now the door opens to what could possibly work better, and what we may find more joyful, and passionate, and exciting in that way. So the strength card is about finding your inner strength, standing up for what you believe in with the chariot, taking control back of your life, not compromising your value because of this Taurus energy and the things that you really may have been compromising on, 
that you would have regretted in the like in the future okay I'm not saying don't compromise and things with people because sometimes the ego gets in the way and your pride gets in the way and you do want things that you probably shouldn't and you do push for things that probably were never there and so you know when to compromise and when it's fair and when you're the only one compromising no way that's no that's not happening so strength card is really about trust trusting whatever is coming in and this just goes it just really amplifies this energy of letting go and surrendering and being like you know universe i get that that wasn't for me it would be really exciting to see something new come in but at the same time, if you're not ready, if you're not healed, you might not want that new thing to come in right now. Because it's like asking for more misalignment. You want to know they're on the same page. You want to know you're on the same page. And so trusting the universe and just saying, you know what? You guys take over my love life. Or I'm fine not having a love life. Or you guys show me my career when the time is right. And I'm just here to learn what I'm supposed to learn right now and just... Not everything has to be planned. Not everything has to be on your time. That's better. Because things do, you need to have a plan. Okay, uh, with this strategy. You need to maybe not see the final outcome, but you need to see the first few steps of how to just begin to get there. So at the end, after the strength, after the chariot, after all these really positive cards here at the end, we have the Nine of Cups, which is about wish fulfillment. So in the beginning, we have the Ten of Cups, right? We want this. We want this stable, secure foundation that is very fulfilling and joyful. This is the energy of, like, the wish. This is the energy of, like, finding out what that exactly is in order to get it. The tangible, like, really actually have it in your life. That's the Ten. So towards the end, we're figuring it out. So this is really great energy to end with. It's like emotional fulfillment becomes clear. The joy that comes in from Jupiter and Pisces becomes clear. The ability to let go of the things Mercury retrograde are showing us and allowing those things to heal really brings us to this place where we're able to move forward. We're able to stand in our own truth and power and choose a new path for ourselves. This course correction that the universe is giving you. Uh, and it is for all of us. And having the inner strength, having the inner knowing, trusting. See, she has her hands all in this lion's mouth. Like, she's just trusting this lion. And uh, it's about that inner strength. It's confident. And it's like just this, you have like an air about you that you just know you're taken care of. You know the universe is going to take care of you. And you're headed towards this Nine of Cups, very happy wish fulfillment stage, okay? And as we move further into that energy, that's when we start to see it actually coming in for us. As we move towards what makes us happy, it starts to come in in a more fulfilling and real tangible way. As we let go of the old and heal and, and look for the places don't look too hard but you know be aware of the places where the fulfillment actually is for you thank you spirit so that was the collective we're going to do a quick couple cards for each sign of what we can expect during mercury retrograde keep in mind that these are just general just a real quickie and so it will not resonate with everyone depending on your chart Make sure to look where Pisces is for you and look where Gemini is for you because that's where Mercury will be retrograding. So you want to see both those spots so you can see what Mercury is trying to show you from your past and you can see what Jupiter is trying to show you for your future. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. Please give us clear interpretations, all signs for Mercury retrograde period, including pre and post shadow. Thank you. Starting with Capricorn. So what is Capricorn going to find during this Mercury retrograde period? What will be 
Capricorn's focus. The world, closure, a thousand million percent. Okay, finding closure, ending a chapter of your life, and getting ready to start a new one. Anything else for Capricorn? Okay. Strength, building on this inner strength, having confidence, relying more on the universe, and Knight of Swords. This could be someone coming in to communicate with you. This could be an air sign, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Or it's some sort of truth moving forward. Or you may come into an, an inspirational idea and decide you want to move forward with that. And it starts to happen very quickly. So for you, with this little spread here, it's like the closure comes in. The world is happening for you. You're thinking about a new beginning. And as you get more confident in that and as you trust more in the universe, things start coming in for you very quickly. So be aware of the people around you, air signs, doesn't have to be, but be aware of the information you're getting and recognizing those signs and that will help you on your path, I feel, with synchronicity. As you build this trust in the universe, these things are going to happen for you quickly now. So let's allow that to happen. Okay. Thank you, Capricorn. Enjoy your Mercury retrograde. Thank you. Tell me about Aquarius for the Mercury retrograde period. What is it they will be focused on? What could they find helpful during this Mercury retrograde period? Aquarius. Okay, Knight of Pentacles. This is uh, could be an Earth sign if you have new love coming in, possibly. So Earth is Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, but this is an energy of deciding on something for the long term and knowing like it's gonna take discipline, it's gonna take hard work, it's gonna take a while to get there. But if I'm steady, I'll get there. It's a slow energy, um, but it's about long term, steady, like stable, secure, foundational energy. And Knight of Pentacles is action. So you may find someone coming in, take like wanting to offer you something. This could be a job offer, a new job offer, or it could be someone trying to commit to you um, on a lower level commitment. This isn't the King of Pentacles, but it's like a higher level of commitment possibly that you already had. I say that because the Hierophant popped out next. So the Hierophant is Taurus. It is commitment. It is traditional values, things like the church, religion, uh, social conditioning, things of that nature. Um, so it seems like you'll get an offer of commitment within this Mercury retrograde period. You may be one of the few that are divinely guided to go back. Don't take my word for it, please. Really discern that for yourself. But if you find, this could actually just be committing to yourself as well. So if you find during this Mercury retrograde period that you're going back to something and willing to commit to it, something that's going to bring you long-term stability and success and abundance, and you're being asked to commit to that thing, you know, use your discernment. If it's a person and you're not in alignment, that's a no-go. If it's committing to you, committing to a new, let's say you get a promotion at work and you're going to have to commit to a new level of learning or get recertified in something or, uh, I mean, it really could be anything when it comes to money. It could be investing in a new idea like a real estate investment or, you know, let's say you want to start flipping houses or you're investing in stocks. Anything like that that's going to take a commitment from you, it looks good for this period. We are, no, wait. There's two cups. <laughs> two of cups on the bottom. So this is a soulmate energy. This is a partnership and a union. So you guys may be getting an offer, a serious offer of commitment during this time of Mercury Retrograde. I'm not saying it has to be someone from your past, but that is what Mercury Retrograde is known for. So just keep that in mind, but please use your discernment, okay? It's possible things didn't line up in the past and now they're ready to, but that chances are pretty slim, okay, for that. Yeah. If the lessons have been learned 
and you're both on the same page, it's possible. But either way, this could be someone new coming in for you during this time. You know, with, with Jupiter and Pisces, this could be someone brand new coming in that changes things for you. It could be some, a coach or someone who, who teaches you about investing. or It could literally be anything, but it looks really good for you, Aquarius. So please enjoy this Mercury Retrograde time. Thank you. Tell me about Pisces, please, for Mercury Retrograde. What is it that Pisces are learning, discovering, going back to? What is the lesson to be learned for Pisces in this Mercury Retrograde? Whoa! Oh my goodness. We've got the sun. This is Leo. This is happiness. Okay. And we have heartbreak, three of swords, air energy, and knight of pentacles. Same as Aquarius. So what I really feel here is that you're finding your own happiness possibly through heartbreak or after heartbreak. Um, and now you're, you're maybe wanting to move forward in a more grounded energy, committing to yourself, recommitting to yourself, or it could be actually an earth sign coming in for you with an offer. So Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, someone who is willing to commit, put in for the long haul, who is ready to offer some form of stability. Okay, so you may actually have been dealing with a Leo and now you may be trying to talk to an earth sign. I'm just saying. <laughs> but in other ways, it could have been that you you had happiness or you felt happy and that didn't work out. And so now you're looking for more long-term stability and commitment. Uh, it doesn't have to be with a person. This could be within you, Pisces, where you're like, you know what? I'm going to just focus on my money because my heart is broken. I thought I was going to have happiness in that career or with that person or whatever. And it's just not working out. So instead, I'm going to focus on me. I'm going to focus on my money. What's going to benefit me in the long term? And then if an earth sign happens to walk in the door, you know, he's walking in the door. But, but also, seeing this, on the bottom, Seven of Wands is like someone who's willing to fight for something. It can be defensive energy, but it's also like putting in the work. So you may want someone who shows you. You know, someone coming in who, who says, not just, yeah, let's move forward or let's make a real commitment here, but who shows it. Who shows you they're willing to fight for you and the relationship and where you're headed. Um, it could also just be you committing to yourself and willing to fight for that. Fight for your stability independently. Okay, thank you, Pisces. Let's move to Aries. Please tell me about Aries. For the Mercury retrograde period, what is it that Aries are learning? What's coming in for Aries? What are they revisiting? And what can we discover with Aries energy? Queen of Pentacles, okay? So this is a very grounded, motherly energy. She's nurturing, she's generous, she cares about others, and she's got money, okay? So if some of you, you may just be focused on your money right now, um, or you may be focused on a Queen of Pentacles, which would be Earth, Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo. We also, have, this Knight of Pentacles has come out almost every time. Knight of Pentacles is this offer. It's this offer of commitment. It's this, it's an idea or an action that you're taking towards long-term stability and success. So we got the Queen of Pentacles. We got the Knight of Pentacles. So for Aries, I really feel like you're focused on your stability. Um, stay grounded during this time. I think that you will. It seems like you're very grounded. And you may be wanting to offer commitment to a Queen of Pentacles. It doesn't have to be feminine. Um, it could be a masculine, but this person is very nurturing and giving. This could be someone like like an earth sign sun, but like their moon is in Cancer or their moon is in Scorpio or Pisces. So they're very loving and caring and nurturing, sort of like a mothering energy or father energy, but they're also very grounded and stable. When it comes to abundance and finances, they can help you with that. And the Knight of Pentacles too is like, it's taking the action necessary. It might take you a long time to get there, but you're committing to it. 
So you may be committing to a new idea when it comes to investments or finances, or you're just committing to a new form of stability and security in your life, whether it's career or a person coming in through Aries. Thank you. Thank you, Spirit. Please tell me about Taurus. Taurus, please. For the Mercury. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was quick. We have the Death card. Okay, this is Scorpio energy. That's exactly your opposite in the Zodiac, but it represents endings and transformation. So you may have realized that something had to go. We all did. Uh, and so you're letting that go and you're actually transforming here through this. You're transitioning into a new phase. With that, we have Page of Wands. So you're transforming. You're moving out of a, out of a state where obviously it wasn't serving you anymore, okay, because you're letting it go. But Page of Wands is going to be more chemistry, more sexual energy, more fire, more passion. Okay, and it's very new. It's very, this person could be younger than you. It doesn't have to be a person either. It could just be you dedicating yourself or getting new ideas about things that are going to be passionate for you. New creative ideas. And uh, it's a very exciting energy because it's, it's new. You know, it's like you're excited for the ways you're transforming and the ways that you can move forward now. Page of Wands is fire. So you may be meeting, come in contact with an Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. And that could be really exciting for you, Taurus. Um, and we have High Priestess on the bottom. So it could be that this is divinely guided or you're getting hits on your intuition and you need to be following that because you're getting guidance. Okay, this is inspiration from either your subconscious or from the higher realms from your connection to spirit. So stay open-minded about this new exciting thing that's coming in for you. Uh, also, be careful with this death card that you're not revisiting old things that have ended and trying to spark romance again within those, okay? Unless you feel, like High Priestess said, unless you feel that that's divinely guided, then I get it. But if it's dead, you might want to leave it dead. You know what I'm saying? Don't try to re-spark life. It's like using the, the heart things when someone's dead. What's it called? Trying to get your heart pumping again? You know what it's called. Don't try to bring life back from the dead, please. Just use your guidance and your discernment, okay? Pray about it. But something is definitely exciting for you. Thank you, Taurus. Let's go to Gemini. Gemini, please. From Mercury Retrograde Period. What is Gemini learning, discovering, revisiting? What can we find through Gemini? Okay, Page of Swords. You may be, uh, this is kind of, this could be a card of like obsessing, following someone on social media. Um, this could just be you like really trying to message somebody or talk through social media or online. This is technology. It also could be uh, someone learning more, trying to go back and study more, trying to research more on a topic. But in reality, this thing is burdensome for you. And so it's kind of time to let this thing go. It's over with. So there's two energies that can come in with this Ten of Wands. It's like, I really want to push through. So I'm going to just keep working hard until I push through this thing. Um, if it's something you've been committed to and dedicated to for a long time. okay. If it's still serving you. If the opportunity still looks good for you. But this is like, it's also possible that you found out a truth. You found out something on social media or someone came and talked to you, had a conversation. And then you realize this thing is just really stressful and burdensome and you want to let it go. So it's either, I love it, I'm going to push hard and, and see this through. Or it's, this is way too stressful and it's a burden and I'm just ready to put it down. Okay, so it's possible, Gemini, that, that you're putting down a fire sign. Okay, because you're here with this mental energy. You could just be overthinking things during this Mercury retrograde. And then uh, a relationship becomes too burdensome because we have the Nine of Pentacles on the bottom. So really you're going to be more focused on you. You may let a relationship go during this time because it, it became too heavy. 
Okay, it was a burden. Uh, and plus you think too much, Gemini, so that could play a factor. But you're becoming more of a self-sufficient, independent person, so you could be becoming single during this Mercury retrograde. Because communication is hard, and especially if there's distance involved, okay? If you're in a long-distance relationship, you may find it more difficult to stay during this time. Thank you, Spirit. Let's move to Cancer. What is Cancer going to be learning, revisiting, finding out, discovering during Mercury retrograde period for Cancer? Cancers. Okay, okay. High Priestess. Okay. Following more of your higher guidance. Following more of your subconscious what it is you want to create so be careful as you manifest because you know you're always manifesting from your subconscious so be careful how you talk to yourself how you think to yourself how you talk and judge other people because high priestess wants to give you a very strong spiritual connection here or an intuitive message it's very important that you're opening uh, yourself up to hear this and then you've got five of swords which is a mental energy but this card is about letting things go, healing, healing yourself, and taking a break from things. No. Fancy's in here, my dog. Anyways, so this is about vacationing, possibly, taking a break off work, taking time off work. This could be, um, like, maybe if you're having family issues, you may want to leave the house for a bit, get away for a bit by yourself. Or this could be you um, really trying to find the new ways that you're you're connected and, and healing. And we have five pinnacles on the bottom here. So you could be healing from insecurity issues, security issues, money, uh, lack mentality. If you are worried about not having enough, really you should look into law of attraction. Okay, because how you come, that's how you attract. How your energy that you bring forth, that's the energy that, that you're calling in. So the more you focus on lack, not having enough, this person wasn't there for me, I was left out in the cold, whatever that is, that's what you're healing from. It stems from insecurity. It could be insecurity emotionally in a relationship or it could financially be an issue. Either way, you're dealing with worth issues, you know, your own personal value, financial issues, and Taurus brings this about because of the value, okay, in Taurus. So you're definitely healing from something. Rely on this high priestess energy to help you during this Mercury retrograde. Don't go back and, and revisit the past or think about, oh, I wasn't enough for them or I didn't have enough or we couldn't make this work because whatever. Okay, that's only going to make things worse, which you should do though is focus on those worth issues and finding your own value and self-worth within so you can have that sense of security and stability no matter who you're around, no matter what job you have because money doesn't give you value, right? So what is it about you that you love that gives you value? And write those things down. You're really healing at this time, so allow for those emotions to come up, deal with them, cry it out, write a letter, do whatever you need to do so that you can heal yourself. Okay, and, and your guides are helping you heal as well. Uh, and don't get defensive. Do not get defensive with people around you. Uh, and you don't want to fall into like that whole pride and ego aspect of self-worth because that would be incorrect. Okay, thank you, Spirit. Please tell me about Leo. Actually, let me shuffle. Thank you. Please tell me about Leo for the Mercury retrograde. What is Leo learning, discerning, revisiting, discovering? Leo, Mercury retrograde. Okay. 
the Leo. We've got this Three of Wands. This is about expansion. This is about waiting. So you may be waiting to see something come in for you or waiting to see how something plays out. This is the card of like, I've done the work um, or I've, I'm working on this thing and so I'm just hoping that something good comes in for me. It is an expansive energy where, where multiple opportunities could be coming in, but it's still a waiting energy of like waiting, I'm just waiting to see. Uh, where this effort that I'm putting in is going to take me. And we have King of Swords, which could be Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini energy. This is very firm communication. You may be wanting to to be firmer in communicating at work, uh, wherein like you're standing up for yourself. Communication uh, with a loved one or in a relationship. We have the moon underneath, which is Pisces, okay? So you may have Pisces in your chart, or you may be um, involved with the Pisces. But this moon card is about what is hidden um, and, and dreams. So this could also bring illusion, but it's very deep emotionally. Okay, so I get the sense that you're waiting on something here, and it is affecting you emotionally. But the, this King of Swords, you got to be careful because King of Swords is so mental. He is transforming. On the back of his throne here, there's a whole bunch of little butterflies. I don't know if you can see that. But butterflies represent transformation. And so it's like he's just turned into this King of Swords. He has these ideas in his head of how he thinks things should go. And King of Swords also could be cutting someone out. Okay. So this energy is like you're waiting to see what's coming in. You're excited about the prospects of what's coming in. You are dealing with some heavy emotions, so you're definitely healing at this time. But King of Swords is asking you to be clear, to be a clear communicator, um, to be diligent, to be using a strategy, have a plan, have like a backup and a backup and a backup plan. Because he is very disciplined and he's very logical. So I see you kind of being torn here, Leo, because we have this emotional stuff going on with the moon. You could be wondering if someone's hiding something from you or wondering uh, what this person is doing because the moon is what is hidden. Um, so it's like you're torn. It's like you may have tried to cut someone out and you're thinking very logically about it. But at the same time, you're forced to deal with these emotions. So we're all healing something, Leo. You're definitely waiting for something to come in. Um, but you got to be firm. you got to be disciplined and willing to, to work hard on this thing. Because King of Swords is very like strategy, discipline, diligence, not letting up. And it's very mental. So don't drive yourself crazy with the thoughts because that could be what is bringing up these emotions. If you're thinking too much. And yes, get excited about what is coming in for you. You may not be able to see it now. You've definitely got something new coming in for you. You're going through a period of transformation and transition as well. Um, and sometimes that includes walking away from something and leaving something behind. Okay, be careful with this mental energy that's coming in for you. For some of you, you could be just dealing with the King of Swords which could be Libra, Gemini, Aquarius. Okay. It seems like you may get a new idea as well, a new spark of creativity or passion, a new passionate beginning that comes in, and that is involving you working on yourself and really investing in yourself, as well as Eight of Pentacles energy is is finding more stability for yourself, really building towards something. So that could be a business partnership. That could just be you uh, learning new things, working on yourself. Okay, thank you, Spirit. Please tell me about Virgo. Please tell me about Virgo for the Mercury retrograde period. What is Virgo learning? discerning, revisiting during Mercury retrograde, Virgo energy.
Okay, Virgo, you're working on yourself. We all are, but this is high priestess energy, working on your connection to the divine, listening to your higher guidance. You're definitely being given some signs and symbols, synchronicity. You are, you're, you are also working on yourself, this Eight of Pentacles, but you're trying to build a more stable foundation for yourself. And it's just really doing the hard work necessary. Sometimes that means uh, learning more about a topic, finding out more um, in order to teach. Sometimes it's finding a mentor to help you. Sometimes it's having an apprentice and teaching them something. But someone could be coming into your life to help you when it comes to your money. This could be a business partnership, networking opportunities, but you will be getting guidance about this and you'll know when it comes because High Priestess gives you those hits on your intuition and Virgo, you're already connected to spirit um, and have a very pure connection. So just be open to those things and that energy when it comes in. You definitely have someone coming in, new opportunities coming in, messages um, because of this Eight of Wands energy. So that energy moves quickly. Things come in and it's exciting and passionate and it gets you going creatively so look forward to that during this mercury retrograde you may have to study up on a subject get recertified you know do some kind of online program or something like that in order to better yourself but i feel you already know what this thing is you've already been thinking about it or a new opportunity comes in and it highlights that for you and of course you will have the guidance of your higher self and your angels etc your team so get with your team on the other side and see what it is they're trying to get you to develop in yourself thank you virgo let's jump to libra libra for the mercury retrograde period what is libra learning to let go libra is learning to let go to walk away uh, even though it hurts, sometimes you got to go it alone, you know, and this is transformation. This is transitioning Six of Swords is Travel you could be wanting to travel. You could be moving. You could be uh, Leaving You know like your hometown and and it's a big change, but You're definitely letting something go and it's a hard one So if it's hard to let this thing go, but you're doing it Okay, you decided it's time to, okay, this could have been love. Two of cups on the bottom. So you could be leaving behind who you thought was your soulmate, a partnership, a business partnership, but you're deciding to walk away from some form of a relationship. It could have been a friend, family member. Um, two of cups is soulmate energy. So, you know, soulmates come in many forms. It doesn't have to be romantic. But it's like deciding this isn't working for me. This is no longer for my highest good. So I'm going to take my chances and, and leave this thing behind. Sometimes there is a sadness involved with this card. Where it's like it's hard to leave, but I'm going to do it. You have the Empress energy. So you may be moving towards an Empress. Some of you may have gotten somebody pregnant. Um, am I mean, good or bad? I know I made that face, but it's because I was thinking with the soulmate, if you left behind a soulmate and then Empress shows up, you're either leaving behind a karmic and then your real soulmate shows up and she's hot shit and she's fertile and she's beautiful and she's abundant. Or you could have left someone behind because you got somebody else pregnant. I'm just saying, I don't know your life, okay? Just take it out of resonates for you. But you're definitely moving in a new direction. You could be getting involved with an empress or you could just be taking on this empress energy. So she is gorgeous. She lights up a room. The empress is like all four queens combined. She's just amazing. She really is. Um, and she's fertile with ideas, with abundance. She's just... She's someone you, you want to be around. You know, and she's stable. And she's, she comes up with crazy ideas and they work. She's just hot. So you're either coming into this energy with an empress or you're becoming this empress, which is possible. 
Uh, so when you leave something behind and it's tough, you know, those are the lessons I was like, damn, I really learned a lot from that. And it was not something I was ready to let go of, but I did it anyways. And now you get rewarded. Now, because you learned those lessons, you were willing to let go of something that you knew wasn't right for you. Now the things that are right for you can come in. Whether that's you, you know, fixing yourself up, very abundant, getting yourself back out there as the Empress, or if this is you finding this Empress, and you'll know when you find her. Chariot on the bottom, definitely moving in a new direction, completely new direction for your life, Libra. So that is awesome. Thank you, Spirit. Let's talk about Scorpio. Scorpio, please. Hey. Scorpio, for the Mercury Retrograde, what is it that Scorpio is learning, revisiting, deciding? Ooh. Oh my, oh my goodness, Scorpio, I see you having some type of victory here over somebody, something is very successful, Six of Wands is like, you could be getting famous, you could be getting recognition finally after all this time, but you are definitely finding success and I think you're finding success in love, new love coming in for you. We have Ace of Cups, this could be another water sign, okay, but this is definitely new love. So water is Scorpio and then Cancer and Pisces. Also, we have this Queen of Cups here, and that's why I just think y'all are onto something here. We've got King of Pentacles on the bottom, Queen of Cups. With the Ace of Cups, you could be getting pregnant, okay? You could uh, have someone around you getting pregnant. Queen of Cups is compassionate. She's very deep and emotional, and she's understanding. So this could be you, and you've coming into this energy or finding a king of pentacles coming in for you. This could be an earth sign, doesn't have to be, Capricorn, Virgo, Taurus. Um, or you could be finding another water sign that really gets you and it sparks this new love and the cup is super full here of love. It's just running over all the love. So you guys really I'm feeling a really great energy for you during this Mercury Retrograde. You may be deciding to go back to somebody from your past if it's divinely guided. If it's meant for you, use your discernment. Don't go back to something that ended like the worst and like you're just thinking, well, maybe. You know what I'm saying. If you're in alignment, great. If you feel that it's, it's divine timing at play and things like that, great. But if not, don't push the past, okay? But this is like really finding success and victory in love with, could be another water sign, or it could be this king of pentacles. Whatever it is, it's financially stable and it's emotionally stable. A lot of love here and fire, passion. This is also the wedding card. So some of you may be finding the person that you're gonna marry. So that's awesome, Scorpio. Very happy for you, indeed. Let's talk about Sagittarius. Okay. Sagittarius. Tell me about Sagittarius for the Mercury retrograde. What is it that they're learning? I pulled those and I knew Spirit wanted me to, but there's more. Spirit's saying there's more. Page of Swords, learning, re-educating yourself on something, researching something, doing a lot on social media. You could be stalking someone on social media or talking to somebody on social media. King of Swords, maybe an air sign, Libra, Gemini, Aquarius, or this could just be you cutting someone out, getting really firm, standing your ground, discipline, strategy, 
very logical energy. It's like this person could be younger than you. If it if there even is a person, this could just be your energy period, okay? But you're looking for some stability here. You're looking for some financial gains. Ten of Pentacles is everything. It's the family, it's the security, it's the finances. And you want it to be equal. It has to be equal. And you know that. You could be finding yourself talking to a Libra. We have King of Swords. We have Page of Swords. And we have this Libra energy with the balancing of the scales on the Six of Pentacles. It has to be equal. Give. It's like Six of Pentacles is like you have money enough to give back. You may be doing charity work during this time with Jupiter here in Pisces. But you may be reflecting on a past situation that you had with somebody. Could have been an air sign. Could have been something long distance too. Could have been something that was mainly over the internet. I don't know. But you were reflecting on something that it's like you felt like you could have had it all with them. And it felt equal. Like it felt like you gave just as much as they did. So Sagittarius, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Who is this King of Swords? Maybe it's you. Maybe it's you putting your foot down about money. Uh, maybe you're studying more about finances and learning more about loans, investments. And it's like you you feel good. This feels really good. But you are looking for more equality. And it seems like you're going to get tougher about that. Okay, so this King of Swords energy is really putting your foot down and being a very clear communicator. Not a jerk, but just like... I need more help. You know, I need this to be equal. So this could be a conversation you're having in your own mind or it could be a conversation you're having with someone else, but you're putting your foot down energetically or through communication. This page of sorts does make me curious. I don't know if you're doing something online, watching somebody online, studying up things online, um, you know, certification programs and that sort of thing. You are doing some research about something. You're learning more about something. And it has to do with money. So, Sagittarius. I like that you're being firm. Make a strategy. Stay disciplined about it. And it has to be equal. Also, if you are getting an extra abundance of money with Jupiter and, and Pisces, make sure you're giving back. Okay, That's that energy as well. Charitable donations, volunteer work, that sort of thing. But I like it. Okay, please like and subscribe. Uh, it really helps me when you do that. And I will see you in the next one.